Let's talk about numbers. As a child, we first use numbers to count things. In math, we call those numbers the natural numbers. Natural numbers start at the number 1 and go on from there. The list of examples could literally go on forever. The way we show a list goes on forever is we put three dots after the list. Mathematicians use the double struck capital N to represent the natural numbers. Counting things is great, but soon it became clear to us that the things we were counting could go away. We could end up with zero. When we include zero with our natural numbers, we call them whole numbers. Whole numbers do not have their own symbol, so we will use the double struck N with the subscript of zero to indicate that we're starting at zero. Whole numbers work in most situations. But somewhere along the line, you probably notice that there are other types of numbers, such as numbers that are less than zero, which we call negative numbers. We see negative numbers when we look at the temperature on a very cold day. Negative 9 degrees? Brr, that's too cold for me to play outside. Negatives are also used when we talk about objects below sea level. Those fish are about 50 feet below sea level. When we're looking at a football game, when someone loses 5 yards, he moved negative 5 yards. When we include negative numbers with the whole numbers, they're called integers, and we use the double struck Z to represent them. But you might have noticed, real life does not come in whole pieces. For example, we can eat an eighth of a pizza. And if I have a dime, that represents one-tenth of a dollar, and we usually represent that using the decimal, 0 0.10. When we start including fractions and decimals that can be written as fractions, we're now working with rational numbers, and we use a double struck Q to represent them. Rational numbers can always be written as a fraction, with an integer in both the numerator and the denominator. All decimals that terminate, such as 3.25, or the decimals that repeat, such as 0.3333, where the 3 goes on forever, can be written as a fraction. You might have recognized that last decimal as being equal to 1 third. Later on, we will show you that, in fact, all repeating decimals can be written as fractions. So, are there numbers that can't be written as a fraction? Yes, and they're called irrational numbers. The most famous one is pi, but there are many more. In fact, there are more irrational numbers than rational numbers. Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction. They are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. And by that I mean the decimal goes on forever without a repeating pattern. Some other examples of irrational numbers are the square roots of any prime number and something you might have heard of in art class, the golden ratio. When we include both rational and irrational numbers together, we have the set of real numbers, represented by the double struck R. And why are they called real numbers? Because they're not imaginary, but more on that later.